I would like to give you a key to your success, and would like to ask you to think about your story, your life story. Why? Because you are a testimony of God's love and mercy. Sometimes it is very hard for us to receive this kind of truth because of the emotional scars that we all seem to carry. But the good news is that you and I don't have to hide our painful experiences because they don't disqualify you from God's promises. I myself have a lot of disappointments, setbacks, and. A lot of things that really caused scar in my life as well. I was growing up in a very broken home, and when I started the church, I lost many of my friends, and a lot of people really walk away from me. Therefore, I have some scars. But I learned one thing: is that those scars, those disappointment, do not really disqualify my fulfillment that I can obtain from. God's promise in Romans chapter 8 verse 39: No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Scars from a strained relationship, from what someone said about you, from a mistake you make, or from a loss. It does not matter. Nothing separates you from God's love. You know, so often we try to hide our scars and imperfections and mistakes. But I have the good news for you today. You can see your scars in a new light. A reminder of what God brought you through, and it's a reminder that God has sufficient grace for you, and He's a miracle-working God. Out of that setback, you had a comeback story. Out of that pain, you receive a new promise. Those scars can now serve as a reminder of God's grace. He has healed our wounds, and the pain is behind us. When you are wounded, there will be people who, instead of being healers, instead of lifting you up, will judge you by your mistakes. They will try to disqualify you, but I want to tell you the good news: people don't have the final say. People are not the ones who caused you or breathed life into you, or knew you before you were formed or born in the mother's womb. God did, and God has the final say. He does not cancel your destiny because you got off course or because you make mistake. He knew every wrong turn, every mess up, every pain you would suffer. Nothing is a surprise to God. You need to turn to Him, seek His face, and trust Him. You need to repent and choose to please Him. The good news is, He has mercy for every mistake. He has restoration for every failure, new beginnings for every loss, a comeback for every setback. What he promised you is still on the way. His love never fails. His promises are still yes and amen. You should not let past hurts keep you down. Instead, you move forward in faith and do what the Spirit of God leads you to do. Don't let your scars stop you. Please see the scars in a different light instead of allowing them to discourage you. Those scars. Remind you of God's mercy. You should thank God for keeping His promises and eventually restoring your life. When I think about how God uses our scars for the good, I think about the story of Abraham and Sarah. God told Abraham that he and his wife Sarah were going to have a baby. Abraham was 75 years old. Sarah was 65. In a natural, having a child at that age. Was impossible, but God is not limited by the natural. God will put promises in you, in your heart, that you don't make sense, and you feel that, wow, this is impossible in your mind. He will even put big things in your spirit that you cannot accomplish on your own. Why? 
because you will need God's supernatural abilities and grace to help you. The key is to trust God and His timing. Years went by, but Abraham and Sarah did not have a baby. They grew impatient and decided that God needed their help. I can imagine their thought: if God was doing the work and wanted to give the baby for us, He would have done it by now. So they came up with their own plan. Sarah urged Abraham to sleep with her maid Hagar. The result was a son named Ishmael, but he was not the promised child. Scripture called this kind of activity or behavior works of the flesh. What are the works of the flesh? We walk in the works of the flesh when we try to make things happen on our own strength, in our own smartness and our thinking. Anger and jealousy got on Sarah's mind. She told her husband to send Hagar and Ishmael away, and she was leaving. Hagar and the child went to the desert, and still Abraham heard nothing from God. Wow, very painful. Hagar was chased away. Ishmael had to go away from the family. Abraham was very depressed and very discouraged. Sarah was mad. I'm sure Abraham thought, "I blew it. I make a big mess. God promises won't happen now." The years continued to pass. Abraham could have been deeply hurt, even scarred by what he thought was God's betrayal. But Abraham trusted God, and 13 years after God had first spoken to him, he broke his silence. After all the mistakes, the failures, and dysfunction in that home, the first thing God said was, "Abraham, you will become a father of many nations." God reminded Abraham of His promise again, just like with Abraham and Sarah. God never gives up on you, even though you make mistakes. If you turn to God and continue to walk in faith, so don't think that you are disqualified from receiving God's blessing. Remember, the enemy is called the accuser. He will remind you of all that you have done wrong, all the deep wounds that became shameful scars. Don't fall into his trap. He may say to you, "You blew it. Join the crowd. We all have made mistakes." He may say, "You make a mess. Come on in. You are in the good company of making mistakes." I want to let you know, don't blame yourself. Because God's mercy make you whole and forgiven. At age 90, Sarah gave birth to a son. They named him Isaac, the promised child. God's word say it happened at the exact time when God said it would. Isaac came right on time. So let me ask you a question: Are you believing that it is too late? Are you believing lies that say if you had made Better choices, being more disciplined, then God would have already given you what He promised. I want to encourage you to turn off the negative voices and remind yourself that you are forgiven, you are loved, you are redeemed, you are set free, you are a child of the Almighty God. Nothing you have done is a surprise to God. You have not missed His promise; they are still yours. How you see your scars can either stop you or strengthen your faith in God's promises. Please see your scar as beautiful reminder of God's grace in your life. Please continue in faith. Turn around, repent, follow God, and may the Lord help you discover His promises for your life and give you guidance for your new season. You are going to see God's hand of healing, God's hand of restoration and provision. Because in Christ Jesus, your story is a comeback story. Remember, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate you and me from the love of God. His promises belong to you, no matter what happened in your life in the past. Let's start a new life again. Forget the past, move on, and continue to hold on, and have faith and expectation in the promise of God, and. Live a life of honoring Him and pleasing Him. God bless you. 
Thank you so much for listening to this teaching. If you don't know Jesus Christ and you say, "I want to join the family of God," why don't you pray with me? I will lead you to pray. Father in heaven, I give my life to you. I admit, Lord, I am a sinner. Thank you, Jesus, the Son of the Living God, who died for me. I want to follow you. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. I repent of my sin. From today on, I'm a child of the Living God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you, and may the Lord lead you and use you to be the blessing to the nations. I hope to see you in other messages. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to the teaching, and I believe that God loves you, and He is your El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. You should thank Him for your current blessings and those who are on the way. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, "I am El Shaddai, God Almighty, or the God of more than enough." Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I would like to encourage you. You are hungry for the Word, and you allow the Word of God to change you. Be with the Holy Spirit. Serve Him and live a blameless life. And the Lord shall bless you and use you to be the blessing to the nations. Thank you. I will see you in the next teaching. God bless you.